If I walk a little bit here, you can see this little guy. He is a frog and look at that fancy animation he has when he walks. That's actually pretty cool. And he should come in three variants. This one, which you can see right here. This one, which is uh, in the warmer climate biomes. And this green one, which should be in the colder climate biomes. So all of them actually have different biomes they spawn in. So if I spawn one here, which is in like snowy plant, it's green. And if I spawn one here, it's just this color. I, I, orange? Orange. Which is pretty cool, I like it. And if I right click on it to try and spawn, you know, smaller frogs, it doesn't work. And they jump. Really cool. Because the way you get more frogs is through tadpoles. Tadpoles can be obtained through these frog spawn when they hatch, which is basically just like a turtle egg. And you get it from breeding two frogs with slime balls, just like this. So now, just like a turtle, one of them will go to the closest water source and they will lay some frog spawn. Uh, but it seems like they're not doing that right now, for some reason. But we have to admire- oh, there it goes. We have to admire this walking animation though, it is pretty sick. But now to the big deal, look at these new blocks. We have three new blocks which are, you know, in the light category of the ochre frog light, the pearlescent frog light, and the verdant frog light. And then as well, we have the mangrove log and its corresponding wood type, which does not appear to have a fence gate currently. It does, but you just couldn't find it. And this is what the wood type looks like. So this is the door. Here are the trap doors, which look really nice with the hole in them. This is the sign type. Here's the fences, and this is all the wood types. So it looks pretty sweet. And the way you would get these is, of course, through the mangrove uh, propagale, I think it's called. And you grow this, and well, it currently grows into an oak tree, but in the future it will grow into a mangrove tree when it's implemented. As well as you can put those in flower pots, which actually looked really, really cool. And I wouldn't mind decorating my house with this. And I won't forget to mention these can be like placed underwater and you can grow a tree and look at that it grows underwater So that's how you get underwater trees now if you happen to start playing on this snapshot very cool And you can't place it on sand only on dirt and of course we have to try the new mud blocks It can be placed on the new mud blocks. What about the ma muddy mangrove roots? No the packed mud and no, but on the mud it you can and well, what is the mud block? It is this and it's got a new placing sound Which sounds pretty interesting same with the muddy mangrove roots and the packed mud Which sounds interesting. I like this the packed mud can be made by using mud and wheat in a crafting table Then you get packed mud and the muddy mangrove roots can be obtained by using mangrove roots and mud. Mangrove roots, of course, being found with the mangrove tree. And they look like this, which is pretty sick. Now, there is something very cool with these roots. Look at that. When you place water in them, it actually stays. So basically, you just have a floating source block destroying this. Well, just leave the water there. But I can contain the water using one of these roots, which is really, really cool. And you can probably make a lot of interesting stuff with this. For example, a cobblestone generator, just like this. It is literally that simple. Of course, you could, of course, use a stair here that's waterlogged and backwards. But, you know, using this is even simpler because you don't even need to place blocks around it. You just have it like this. And it's fully contained in there. It can float and everything. It is so cool. This is definitely one of my favorite blocks. Back to tadpoles and frogs. Tadpoles can be collected via a water bucket and it'll look like this. That is actually adorable. I enjoy that. And we place them down, they just come out of the bucket. You can feed them slime balls to grow them and I don't know if they grow visually, but if you feed them enough slime balls, maybe they'll grow faster. Let's try and spam one and see if it helps it. Uh, maybe. It just kind of floats up to the surface and it doesn't seem to be working right now because I've spent so many slime balls on this little guy. But let's just... Oh, there he goes. Okay, so he does grow into a frog just like that. Interesting. But of course, if you have a pond where you're trying to go frogs, make sure you don't have any axolotls because they're ruthless. They will attack all the tadpoles. No mercy. And well, uh, goodbye tadpoles and goodbye frog. Frogs, however, seem to be safe and they can swim. They look pretty cool doing so as well. So yeah, frogs are safe from the axolotls, but you know, they can't really do much anyway. 
But yeah, tadpoles, not a good fit for axolotls. Now there was something else as well. Every time they croak, as you can see there, their mouth actually moves, which is pretty cool. Now frogs will attack these smallest of magma cubes, just like this. And when they do, they will drop the frog lights. So that is how you will have to obtain them. They will, however, not attack these ones or any bigger, but they will attack the small ones. So if I kill this one here, you can see that this frog will actually, you know, attack all of them. And that's how you obtain your frog lights. So the best way to set this up would be through a magma cube farm through a bastion in the nether. So some bastions actually have magma cube spawners that you can use. And it will actually be useful now. So you just have to transport the different frog types into the nether so you can get your different variants of frog light just like this. Which would probably be quite a hard task, but hey, if you want frog lights, that's how you do it. Now in this new snapshot, they haven't yet added the deep dark ancient cities, but they have added the deep dark biome. As you can see here, this is called the deep dark. And in this biome, you can see that the skulk spawns in, uh, you know, uh, there is a lot of it. If I go into the wall here, you can see, oh my goodness, that is a lot of skulk. And well, since the warden isn't here yet, and uh, well, you can just do this. Look at all the XP you get from this, cause you know, skull box, they drop XP. So if you have an efficiency five ho, there you go. You have so much XP that you can get. And since the XP is broken from a block, any shriekers in the area won't actually collect them up. So you can just mine XP like this. That's very cool. Of course, this would be way, way, way more dangerous if the warden was here. Because he would just pop up out of the ground and come get you if there was a shrieker in the area. Which there isn't here. Very nice. Now, shriekers, of course. I mean, catalysts. They can spread a skulk again. So if I kill a blaze on it, there it goes. It spreads a lot of things. And it spreads pretty far too. I am actually not sure how far it can spread, but oh my goodness, is it good. So yeah, this is how you get more skull because, uh, well, you have a lot of it now. Very cool. Oh, and in your sounds, there is an option now for directional audio. So if you enable this, well, it should make it easier to determine where the sound is coming from. And for example, the skeletons to my left should play more through my left there. Although I can't really tell the difference because it's always done that. But hey, that's a cool new setting. And uh, also, if you happen to find one of these inside of the deep dark biomes, it'll be covered in this. So you'll have to break that. But of course, you can collect it with silk touch. So hey, if you want all the vine stuff, here you go. Inside of the... Amethyst Geo, there's loads of it. Very cool. And yeah, I think that's about everything added with the snapshot so far that I've seen. Want to see more of my videos? Make sure to subscribe. Thanks. Bye!